everything off. Right, everybody ready? Yay! Hooray! <laughs> right, okay. Right. So, um, last week I talked a little bit about colour and we looked at the colour wheel oh. and we looked at mark making on uh, some different paintings as well. Um, so we'll have a look at, uh, just as a reminder, of all the things that we were covering last week. If you remember, I did quite a tight painting as far as the uh, blue statue that I did goes. And then I did some very loose uh, mark making around the outside in the background, some big brush strokes and things to get a bit of expressive movement in there as well. And also it was in response to a picture. So we'll have a look at that picture uh, now. So it's this one over here, which Christine, I think, has painted as well. Um, so I'll just bring that up to the front so that we can get it a bit bigger. There we go. So, yeah, so I was inspired by this uh, colour scheme just here. So we've got these uh, lovely warm oranges here uh, and then blue to contrast it. So as you remember, orange and blue are opposite uh, on the colour wheel there so that adds a little bit of like a contemporary sort of feel to it um, so we've got these nice warm colours against cooler colours and then um, on my picture anyway uh, some parts where the blue and the background yellow had mixed together I had a little bit of green and uh, that went quite well with what I was looking at here but equally I responded to the mark making on um, uh, the background around here as well and uh, so that helped to sort of loosen up the picture so I had nice tight as I said a minute ago nice tight imagery and then uh, like nice loose expressive marks in the background and if you remember as well I suggested if you haven't used acrylics very much uh, before is just to work on a small area of your picture to begin with uh, so like you might start with a head or something and then work out from there and the reason for that is that the paint with acrylic will dry very uh, quickly so uh, whilst it's wet it's nice to um, be able to blend it and things using a bit of water just a touch of water not letting your brush get too dry so the paint uh, looks kind of it has a hairy effect on the surface if it's too dry if you had a little bit of water or at least just a damp brush it allows you to blend the colors really nicely all right so um following that this week i came across um some of these <laughs> really mossy looking uh photographs uh mossy statues of figures i know i was looking at figures before but um i was thinking about texture and things as well and um, some of these uh, nice old statues have like moss growing on them. So we've got a picture of Pan, the god Pan just here, um, which I've been working from and I'll show you in a second. And then just over here, we've got a couple of others and I've put them on the website this evening. So if you uh, are not carrying on with what you were doing last week, then um, this might be the thing that you'd like to start next. I've got this one of uh, we were debating if this is a real person that's been made to look like the background. I think possibly it has, um, but it's very convincing as a as an old statue in the background there. So I'd imagine if you stand far enough away from this man, he'll disappear completely. But I thought it was a brilliant picture because you've got all this cracked surfaces on the mud in the background uh, and so forth. So if you fancied exploring texture a little bit more then uh, pictures like this are really nice and I'll show you what I've done because I've stuck to the idea of um, applying colour to these images as well um, let me just move that one up so I've got another one here which is really dark and kind of mysterious but it's really a motive and interesting subject this one's quite nice because you've got really light uh, focus on the face and then deep shadows and uh, mid-tone leaves uh, on there as well so it's another sort of example of the kind of pictures that I've been looking at this week as an extension to what we've been doing before with the expressive marks and the um, textures and so forth 
and beginning to have a little bit of a play with acrylics so um we'll go over to my desk hopefully the camera's on this week yay camera's on <laughs> and i'm there so that's good news um let's just see if i can get rid of that horrible bit there on the side which i probably can't now there we go that's gone right so uh, this is what we were doing last week and you'll remember me painting it and if you can't and you want to see uh, what I did again then the video is on the website as you may have seen already. Um, so I started around the face here and I blended each individual area and I was using a violet colour and indigo and white so a nice limited colour palette not too many colours. Um, and that allows you just to focus on the technique of blending and so forth and then later um, just out, just over here actually I just that's what I wanted to point out is that just over here you've got a little bit of sort of yellow coming through from the background which looks a bit green obviously when you put the blue across it and things um, so I took that idea of using a bit of green and I looked at the picture that we were just discussing back there and started to use some of these greens and touches of violet and pink and things in the background so I had a lot of fun um, doing that um, and now I've chosen to look at this picture of pan that we've got over here so I'm doing something quite similar but um, I just wanted to share with you something you might be able to do at home which just involves uh, and I thought this today so it involves using uh, a candle so I'll just move this out of the way. So this is the one I've been working on a little bit today. Um, now in the background here, um, I did a blend from dark green into a lighter green at the top. And then what I did is I drew the figure out. And the way I drew it out actually this time is I did use a little bit of a grid. Um, but I did it in a much simpler way. So the, the way to do this is literally to take your photo, cut it out and then fold it in half. Fold it in half again and fold it in half again. So you've kind of made a rectangular grid from your cut out piece of paper. And then what you can do, of course, is you can enlarge the picture a little bit from from there. Um, I can show if ever, if everyone would like me to show you how to enlarge that I will do that in just a few seconds um, but going back to this I made the background as I said and then following that I um, I drew the figure out using uh, this grid that I just talked about so I've enlarged the picture and I, I can explain that in a few seconds as I said um, and then what I did is I use some candle wax so I've got this um, just a piece of candle you may have candles at home somewhere um, that you can use which is why I'm, I thought this would be nice to mention uh, without notice um, because you can uh, use this to create texture so if I zoom in a bit so basically all I did was put the candle wax all the way around the background of the figure so all the way around here in the background and I applied this candle really heavily just by rubbing it over the surface and then straight after that you can paint over the top of it. Now acrylic, um, you're probably thinking well will the wax, or you might be thinking will the wax resist um, the paint and therefore create the texture straight away. Well because um, acrylic paint is kind of a plastic or a resin it actually you can paint straight over the top of um, <clears throat> wax when you put it down um, and it won't resist unless you add loads and loads of water so if I just apply that over the top there now because you've got this kind of slippery surface underneath the uh, paint that you've just applied it makes it much easier to manipulate and scratch away so I did a little bit just over here I don't know if I get any close yep I can and when that's dry and it will dry quickly 
you can take a piece of sandpaper or you can just uh, you you could use a scouring pad you could scratch it with your nails um, or you could use you could use a sharp Im implement and you can scratch that surface away so here we go I'm going to use a bit of sandpaper just to show you what I mean so you can scratch the surface with the sandpaper and pretty much it comes away and you end up with uh, a little bit of a textured surface so I've done that up here earlier on um, but as we're talking about texture a little bit today um, I thought this would be interesting for you to see um, just down here where I've just put the paint is still wet um, but I've got the back of a brush here so again I can scratch through I've already got texture under here need my nail to scratch the surface so you can create some really interesting um, backgrounds uh, on your piece uh, and I'm going to apply some of these textures as well onto the figure itself a little bit later all right so that's technique of the evening <laughs> is a candle or some wax at least uh, plus paint on top either sandpaper scouring pad something sharp to scratch it away and you can create these uh, really interesting textures for your work okay now um, going on over to this part of my picture it's quite a long one so I'm just having to move things around a little bit here so this picture or this part of the picture I should say I've been working directly from uh, the photograph which is just here and um, first of all I've been using um, and so I know that some of you have got this because we did it a few weeks ago um, I've been using some Indian ink and a dippy pen you could use a brush just as easily if you haven't got a dippy pen um, and I've just been using this pen a bit like we do the biros that we did the other week uh, you can hatch and scribble in the details so once that's done so this is all with cross hatching and line just to show where the tone and shadow is and you can come back and do some more so I quite liked it because it this um, this figure here is is got some really nice contrasting shadow and stuff on there so I'm trying to sort of bring that out in the picture now um, as you know we put that green background in so when once I'd done that I then started to add the highlights using some white paint and I went for the indigo again as I did before and then I can start adding in the highlights onto here now the ink Indian ink or at least the Indian ink that I've got here does um, it is runny when you uh, water it down again but it didn't really affect the painting process so just bring that over a little bit it's a bit tricky because I've got a quite a high up picture here so you can then use your acrylic paint with a limited palette once more to add in the tones and shadows or at least the highlights I should say not the tones and shadows so much but the highlights onto the things like the, the pipes that um, Pan is playing here and then whilst that bit's wet I can add a little bit of blue so as you can see from the face particularly I haven't um, shaded over all of my lines that I did with the pen I'm using those as the main part of the shadow but um, I'm adding mainly the highlights to really make him come out of the the green and out of the picture so again just keeping the colors quite simple mono if you like you can add other little bits and accents of colors like I talked about before 
but it's quite satisfying I find to once you've drawn this out and you've added some shadows to really make those details like on my face for example and around these pipes start to pop out and you'll find um, if your paints uh, if you paint it and it's not quite bright enough then you can put another layer on top to really make those whites come forward and therefore make the pipes or whatever it is stand out so it is a case of layering a little bit but if you do a little bit at a time you can blend it and then come back and add highlights just like I did on the one last week so um, as I've said at the beginning if you're still working on the one from last week please carry on doing that I've given you here a few things other things that you can try out with your inks with your wax candles if you've got one <laughs> I always think everybody's got candles because we used to get power cuts and we always had a candle when I was a kid I don't know if that's the case anymore with people you can certainly still get candles can't you? but people use them for the effect the cozy effect I suppose anyway I'm rabbiting on now okay so um, you can see as well that I've worked back into the background here too with the acrylics and because there is still wax under there of course I can scratch some of that away and add a little bit more texture in there as well all right so um, that's the plan for this evening I hope everyone's happily working away on what they're doing um, as I said there are some more of these lovely mossy pictures on um, our on our website so if you want to look there and try out one of those please do please do how is everybody then is everybody all right everyone's probably just working away while i'm yapping aren't they ah okay <laughs> all right if anyone's got any you're questions not, please not, ask you're not yapping you're a good teacher oh thank you very much that's you're not rabbit on you're a good teacher <laughs> Well, it's difficult because when you're sitting here on your own, you know, in a room, I know I'm not on my own, but I kind of am. <laughs> you think, uh, is everyone working away or has everyone gone for a cup of tea? <laughs> yeah, you're watching telly. Just let him get on with it. <laughs> I'm interrupting. <laughs> Jamie, the green you used on pan. Yeah. Is it that, um, is it Viridian? Um, do you know what? I don't know um, because I did it early um, did it this morning um, it's probably to be honest it's probably emerald green oh, wait on. no no I can check that it's in my cupboard hold on a sec um, it was Fatalio green I was gonna say Fatalio but yes it was Fatalio green I'm not sure that I've got that one doesn't matter um, yeah, emerald, they, emerald it, green would be great if you're going to go for the same colours that I've used. Okay, the um, the background shrub, I think is something called Photon Tia, and it's got the lovely, they have reddish leaves, it's a bit like a kind of bigger laurel. Oh now, yeah. Looking at your colour wheel, <laughs> and looking at the greens, and then opposite you've got some reds. Yeah. Um, I think that would look too stark a contrast. Well, you could, um, <clears throat> what you could do if you want to put some reds in, you could, you know, you could use, um, you could go for the, you could go for more of the natural, like, colours that are actually on there. You could go for the greys and then add hints of reds in there. Do you know what I mean? Sort of. Yes. Or you could go for the blues and just add the odd sort of highlight of a colour into your mm. picture as well. Okay. Does that make does that make yes, sense? Thank you. Yeah. I mean I did that with this one. You know, I put I've used purples in there to sort of draw attention to the shadows, I guess, or send those back a little bit. And in the background I've used hints of pink over the top, but it doesn't dominate the whole picture. Okay, then. okay thank you. Yeah, that's all right. 
disappearance because I've gone to get something from the printer. Oh, all right, okay, yeah, not not to worry. <laughs> I've gone very dark. Not sure why. Let's have a look. See if I can lighten myself up a bit. <laughs> Oh, isn't he? Yeah. He's the green man, isn't he? Sorry? Ham is the green man. Yes, he is, yes. And we did that, didn't we, in lockdown? The green yeah. man. Jamie? Yeah? It's Jackie here. Hi there, Jackie. Well, I'm going to have a go at doing the candle thing. Yeah. Wax thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm not really very happy with my background because it's too bright. Okay, can I, so um, can I, I see? Some, I put oh, some yeah. wax on it now, sort of all around the figure. Yeah. Shall I just try a little area and see what happens? Because I can't really see the um, wax on the screen that I put on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just try a bit in, in an area that, you know, isn't going to matter too much, really. So down the bottom, I would say, just have a little trial and see what you see what you think. The nice thing is because of the wax you'll be able to scratch a lot of it off if you don't want it okay. there yeah so um is it just sort of normal thickness of, of paint then uh paint yeah it, i just added a little bit of water if you see what i mean just so a bit of water to help the paint flow but nothing more than that really okay. yeah right i'll give it a go then yeah okay yeah let me know how it I goes yeah, I'll, I'll turn the camera off in case I swear. Not the camera, I'll turn the sound off in case I'm swearing. <laughs> Just do a little bit, you'll be all right, and you can work over it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, so um, a little bit of the film uh, didn't get recorded tonight. Unfortunately, got a few malfunctions, but uh, you can see that following uh, my last uh, little bit of talking there at the end of the introduction, that um, I was going to add in pen. So I've used um, a dippy pen or a dip pen, uh, quite a fine one to add lots of uh, mark making into the shadows. So I've used Indian ink and uh, a nice pen to add in some of the shadows that you can see on the figure there on the right of uh, Pan. Um, and then gradually I used indigo and just white and in indigo to add tones and shadows uh, and highlights, lots of highlights back over the top of the green that was in the background originally. Um, so I had lots of fun doing that. And um, one thing that I kind of started to get interested in was adding uh, small highlights and things or little circles and dots and stipples onto the surface of the skin. Um, because I was thinking a little bit about the character of Pan and how he's very much um, part of nature and so forth. So I wanted to bring that um, kind of mossy effect uh, onto the surface of the skin, like uh, things had, you know, got onto the surface and weathered him and like he had nature growing on him uh, and around him and so forth. Um, just here, what you can see me doing now is um, I'm making the background as much part of the picture as the figure itself. So I was doing a little bit of blue and white to highlight his head. Um, and that came from looking at the sky a little bit, but I, you know, just putting in a few ideas of my own as well. Uh, and then using a fine brush uh, to add in a few more highlights, little circles and dots, as I was saying earlier, onto the skin. So I kind of loosened up quite a bit and um, with this part of the process, I was lo very loosely putting in a few uh, suggestions of leaves into the background without actually particularly illustrating them um, in a precise way or anything. And here very loosely again using the pen uh, in the background to add a bit more surface decoration or surface texture 
to draw the eye and just capture something different about this character who is Pan. So a very, uh, very short video this week, but um, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I'm going back in here with the pen, adding a bit more detail. I also put some lines on the background there. Just after this video finished, I did actually remove some of the black uh, that I'm putting in right now in the background. Um, but what I, how I did that was I got a sharp object, which I think was a scalpel blade, and I just scratched some horizontal or slightly angled lines hatched into the background um, to get uh, this sense of space and movement in there as well. So, and just at the end there, I did some extra strong highlights. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, try out the wax if you can, the candle wax. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>